the lesson of today, traditional professional cooking skills with modern technologies, okay? Hello, good, good morning. Good morning. Okay. So we will start with, I will present you the, our school and I would like to present, uh, my name is Josu Bidichinaga, I'm culinary arts, arts teacher. I have been working as a cook for a long time. I owned my own restaurant a long time ago and uh, I have been working uh, both in my restaurant and uh, teaching in vocational training school of uh, Leioa for long. Now I just uh, work as a culinary arts teacher, okay? And uh, I would like to present uh, my school, the school where I have been working for uh, 22 years, okay? Since uh, 1999 and Good morning, Sergio. Good morning, Joshua. Okay. And I'm going to present this. Can you see our kitchen? Yes. Yes, can you see the image? Thank you very much. Okay. And this is our uh, main uh, kitchen. Okay. It's a big central kitchen where we cook for uh, 1,000 people every day. Okay. Currently, because of the COVID, due to COVID disease, okay, we just uh, provide the 40% of the meals, more or less 400. Uh, meals a day, okay, divided into different turns, different shifts, okay, and uh, in our kitchen we have, uh, in this thing link, we have uh, uploaded different materials, okay. The, I will show the, the materials, here are those related uh, with the correct mission plus, okay, in this part we have uploaded those related with uh, to knife skills. Uh, later on, we, we will present a part by part, okay? In this part, we have different cooking techniques, okay? Food preservation methods, okay? Then we have food presentations, plating and this stuff. And then here we have the open batches part, okay? I will show later what uh, do, do we want about, uh, what do we think about open batches, okay? And then we have this part where we will go to uh, downstairs. This is the first floor of our school and this part is the zero floor, okay? And here we have uploaded another materials connected to the materials uh, of the first floor. Here, knife skills, another videos or uh, PowerPoints, innovation as a part of food, current trends in food, and also here we have nature as a part of food making, okay? And mise en place uh, materials, connected with mise en place. The first floor kitchen that appears in the in the picture is the our big central kitchen. This part is the uh, pastry workshop. Okay, uh, here we prepare the pastry, the the desserts for one thousand people, uh, and this is the the bakery. Okay, sorry, this is the bakery. This is the uh, room temperature. Uh, storage room, okay, and here also we have this part related to open batches, okay. Does anybody of you know what open batches are?
Does anybody know what uh, open batches? Let's see a bit. OK. This is the open batches. We have here the information. And this is the guidance about what open, open batches are. In order to apply, OK, you have, you must have some web platform, OK? Like Google Drive, Office, or OneDrive, or a blog, OK? You already have a blog. Most of you have a, uh, have a blog in Facebook, OK? To make a presentation on, a, on some subject applied for, OK? The batch application is linked to the uh, report or presentation, OK? You can link your pre the report on the batch application and uh, you can put what you are doing about this specific uh, aspect, OK? So uh, click on a batch and, and uh, you can see the learning goals and you can present those goals, those, lear those learning goals that you think you have uh, reached with your work, with your task that appears in the blog, OK? And here you can open the batch passport, OK? Uh, seems like uh, those uh, university credits, OK, where you when you get some uh, specific ta uh, learning goals, you can uh, show them with your uh, blog or with your reports, okay, with your job. And you have different batches about ecological footprint, food waste, in this case, sustainable innovations, okay. I will show you them in Omnia. And uh, those are the learning goals understand what's meant by innovation. Uh, you can tell about at least one food related with innovation, OK? And the evidence required are link a presentation defining innovation as a concept and link to a self-produced presentation featuring at least one food related innovation, OK? Those are open batches. Take it into account and in your blogs, OK, when you are uh, when you are uh, posting the different contents, OK, take it into account to ask for, the, ask for those open batches, OK? You have to uh, post uh, contents about five different modules, isn't it? OK, five different modules, and this is the, fi the fifth one, OK, but you have to post the, the, the contents about those five modules. Everything pointed and connected to the pop-up event. OK. Any question about that? I have a question. I yes. am very sorry. Could you repeat again? My brain doesn't work and I'm not quite understood with the open budget. OK, very Sorry good. about that, but please no, repeat no, no. again. No, no worries. OK, the open budgets here we have in the first floor. OK, we have here the open budgets. Yes, I understand that. Uh, so this is what I not understand. Uh, we have a uh, file content, as you mentioned early. So we need yes. to open this uh, open budget into the block with the file paid content. We need to do it. Is it that that? I'm not understood with this, Kyle. OK. Uh, yeah. Uh, what you have in the. What you, what you have in the in the Facebook, for for instance, I'm going to. Uh, to post one, I have been uh, searching yesterday. Can you see the page of Facebook that I, I have opened? Uh, on Facebook. Yes, we can. Can I uh, sort of answer for really, really fast for your question for open patches? Thank yes, you very please. much. Anna. So open batches, they are digital sort of method that uh, proven your evidence, what you have learned. So they are tasks and you just reply. 
in four of the uh, we have five different models. So you have started the personal branding and marketing. Under personal branding and marketing, there are none whatsoever at the moment open patches. But for next model, for the local food and creating menus, there are some open patches. In sustainable gastronomy, there are some open patches. And plant-based diets, there are some open patches. And as you saw, the, the ones what uh, Josus has showed you, there are some in traditional and professional cooking as well. So there are sort of tasks what you have learned. Uh, those tasks are combined for the event what you are creating. So now when you have created all the way for that uh, pop-up event, there are some tasks that uh, if you have understood correctly what means uh, menu planning, uh, and when you start to create your menus, uh, you can add that menu in that open pass and say that, okay, this is the menu what we created. So they are small tasks what you need to reply. And if you remember correctly, when uh, uh, Janne started in the first one in personal branding and marketing, Man, Janne told you all that when you create your blogs, you need to create five different sub pages and under the sub pages there are some tasks what you need to reply for them if there is any help i could sort of um i will sort of write some guidelines for the facebook today okay so. yeah all right i think i get into it thank you very much okay no yeah. worries thank sorry, you sorry no 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 problem no no thank you very much to you ona can you see this page of uh, it's a blog from uh, george aris Villaflor. i don't know whether he's uh, attending the lesson or not but can you see this page of uh, fa this uh, facebook yes. blog yes okay as you can see here they uh, he has divided the five uh, modules in different pages module one module two module three module four and module five yes and you can post in the, uh, those pages the contents related uh, to this uh, activity uh, for the for the pop-up event okay and for instance uh, george has posted personal branding and marketing okay and he has uh, read, written down different uh, reflections and about professionalism consistency okay and uh, here uh, uh, you can uh, put the different uh, aspects you have learned about branding and marketing. The same in uh, local food and creative menus, the same sustainable gastronomy, and what the task you have done uh, or written down in those pages, you can show as an evidence to get those uh, open budgets okay that's that was so, the, the idea okay so the last one is the open budget that we need to fill up that's what you mean i i understood like that correct so that's the last um model that we need to add in no, I, the, last, um, uh, no, ah. the, the last module is uh, about the module i am teaching about traditional, <sighs> traditional cooking skills with modern technologies okay okay i'm go with it yeah, thank you well, very much. So uh, let's start with the with the lesson, and uh, the lesson we will start with uh, what starts uh, any kind of uh, kitchen activity, on mainly starts. Just a minute. Okay, here we are. We will start where starts the kitchen activity, and kitchen activity mainly starts uh, with a knife. Okay, we will start preparing uh, the different ingredients for later to cook them or to uh, apply different cooking techniques to present them in the dining room to the customer. Okay, so here we have the knife skills part. And in this part, you can see different materials, different videos, okay? Different videos and uh, this picture. This picture uh, was taken in our kitchen in an activity, uh, a curricular activity we developed with some Japanese chefs, okay? Here you can see uh, the 
those knives, okay, they brought the knives in this case, okay, with uh, uh, very, very expensive knives and very specific knives uh, for uh, mainly for uh, for fish, okay. And in this in this part, I think that this material is uh, quite quite visual, okay. It's quite you can uh, see the different uh, uh, knives, and it's quite visual. It's better to present it like this. For example, for instance, uh, basic knife skills, okay, that we have to uh, know before we start uh, cooking. And this is a video recorded with our students at the kitchen. Related with knife skills with vegetables, okay, different cuts, brunoise, or mirepoix, or julienne, okay. As you can see, and the fingers, the safety measures, very, very, really important. And those are different uh, techniques. mainly with vegetables. Okay. And we could divide the cutting techniques, knife uh, cutting techniques, depending on what. When we when we are speaking about or talking about vegetables, cutting techniques are divided into two kind of cutting techniques, depending on what we are going to do with those uh, vegetables. If we want the vegetables to see, the cutting techniques are bigger. Okay, could be julienne, could be mirepoix. Okay, if we want just to season a sauce or any other kind of preparation we cut the vegetables in smaller pieces like brunoise okay you can see here the boning the chicken okay with a different knife okay with a globe very important okay related with uh, with knife skills really important uh, three parts the safety the sanitation measures okay and also the gastronomical result that we we want to achieve with the knives okay very very important okay here we have the, the presentation yes Okay, knife skills and most most common cutting techniques. Those are the those are the main knives that we use for vegetable, and mainly we use two: the chef chef's knife and the paring knife, the small knife. Okay. Also, the, uh, do we can divide the paring knife into two knives? One is those. This is this is for more general purpose, and this is mainly. Uh, designed to uh, turn different vegetables, to shape different vegetables. Okay, this is a very the most common knife for a chef, the chef's knife, because it's a multi-purpose knife. It's not only for vegetables; it could be used for meat, for fish. Okay, and uh, it's important the, to, of course, uh, the edge has to be perfectly sharpened. Okay. And it has to be a good quality knife, okay, with weight, a good knife. Dif common vegetable cuts are brunoise, julienne, diced, mirepoix, tournette, okay. And as I have uh, told you before, the 
the cuts are always related with the cooking technique that we want to apply. Okay, the cooking technique, this case, this kind of cuts like brunoise is more connected to uh, uh, seasoning as a, when we uh, cut the vegetables as a seasoning ingredient for a stuffing, for a filling, okay, or for a sauce. Uh, here we want the vegetable to uh, uh, to add the its flavor, but uh, we don't want the uh, don't want the vegetables to be excessively noticed. Okay, it's a it's a part of the preparation that adds flavor. Here, in with this kind of uh, cut, we want the vegetable uh, get more protagonism. Okay, get more uh, uh, more noticed and to be seen. Okay, could be like uh, the typical preparation for this kind of cut. Could be for for example uh, uh, ratatouille. Okay, this kind of preparation. Okay, and the same in julienne. Okay? When we cut in julienne, means that we want the vegetable to be protagonist. Okay, the nice for meat. The most typical knives are three for different three different purposes. Okay, this is the slicing knife. Okay, to get uh, steaks, for instance. Okay, the 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 shape of the of the edge helps to it. Okay, is not uh, suitable to cut bones. It's just to slice. This is the cleaver. This is very suitable. Is Quite heavy and it's very suitable to cut bones, okay, and uh, mainly for that purpose eh, to cut bones. For for example, T-bone steaks and these kind of uh, cuts. And here we have the uh, bony knife, okay. It's a small knife. Okay? The shape is like a quite uh, curved and it's suitable to bone knife, mainly. Uh, for big pieces, okay, and this is the, those are the most common knives for uh, meat. And common meat cuts so could be the steaks, could be a uh, stick tartare, could be a tomahawk, okay, or tornado, which would be a, a, a slice taken from the tenderloin, veal or beef tenderloin, okay, and could be the osobuco, okay. Anybody knows the osobuco? Which part of the of the beef of the or the veal uh, is taken uh, the osobuco? Mainly, osobuco is a typical cut from the from the shank, okay, from the shank. It's a Italian preparation, typical, okay, and those are the most common meat cuts. Okay, this is small pieces, and it's very important. Uh, in this case, for example, the stick tartare has to be cut uh, by knife, okay, compulsorily. Okay, it's nowadays, sadly, it's quite typical to see the stick tartare is cut with uh, different uh, robots like uh, thermomis and things like this, but the most appropriate uh, way to cut is with a knife, okay? And we have here knives for fish, filleting knife, and also we have, uh, it's like a cleaver, but we call here half moon knife for fish, okay? Uh, People in, in our country, people who work in fishers, uh, fish stores, okay, mainly use this knife. It's a big one, okay, and they use almost for everything this kind of knife, okay. In the kitchen, it's most common to use this one, the filleting knife, okay. And in, in any kind of uh, uh, ingredient that we want to cut or to prepare it, we to prepare with uh, with knife is really important to the knife to be perfectly sharpened. But in when it comes to fish, is more even more important. They have to be perfectly 
uh, sharpened, okay? We have to, uh, the less we touch the fish when we are cutting or slicing or portioning it, the better, okay? Just the knife is in contact with the fish, not our hands, okay? We, we don't have to pressure, not uh, with our hands, nor with the knife, the fish, okay? The fish has to be just cut by the knife, okay? It's really, really important. If you see videos, of different chefs uh, cutting uh, sashimi and this kind of uh, Japanese preparation, you will see that they almost don't touch the fish. Just the knife is the which is in contact in contact with the fish. Okay. And common fish cuts. We can see uh, supremes of of salmon. Okay. Uh, slices or uh, fillets, okay? Different cuts, we have more cuts uh, uh, with fish, of course, those are the most basic ones, okay? Very good. And uh, we have in, in this uh, part, okay, we have a task and you can, where you can search for different cutting techniques in Europe, okay, in our uh, cultures, okay, different cuts for vegetables, different cuts for fish or for meat. Remember that uh, in most of cases, the cut that you are going to apply to a vegetable or fish or meat is or goes related with a cooking a specific cooking technique. It has a specific purpose, okay? And that's very, very important. For example, uh, when you are going to, to portion a fish, okay, it's really important what kind of cooking technique you are going to apply or whether the fish is going to be, uh, in what cases the fish goes with skin or without skin, okay? It's really important to know it, okay? M mostly, we maintain the skin in the fish to avoid that when we are going, when we are going to cook this fish, uh, to avoid it gets broken down, okay? because mo some fishes, specifically uh, non-fatty fishes, are quite delicate when we are going to cook them, okay? So here you have uh, different uh, materials, okay? We have uh, another video here about uh, how to choose your knives, okay? The peri knife, okay, serrated knife. An axe for meat, clover, okay, the half moon, this is for, those are for fish, okay. So here you have material about uh, how to choose your knives. Okay, just a question for, for, for you, the different students of Omnia, Tartu, and Bamia. Uh, what kind of knives or do you use the same knife knives as us or do you use different knives for different tasks? Do you use any kind of knife that doesn't appear here in, in those materials that you think are important? No, you use same knife. 
most of, more or less the same, okay? Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, you, you carry your own knives to the school? Yes. In yes, a I did. Mm -hmm. I have a bag. Uh -huh, your own bags, okay? Yes. We uh, we provide of knives to our students, our own knives, knives of the school, okay? And we maintain them, we keep them in different armchairs, different, uh, they are like uh, boxes, and uh, there the knives are uh, sanitized with uh, ozone, okay? We sanitize them with ozone, and uh, some years ago, we used to maintain them with uh, ultraviolet, uh, like in uh, barber shops, ultraviolet light to maintain them clean and uh, sanitized. Okay, this is a very important. Why? Because uh, when it comes to knives, it's the knife is one of the most common tool that uh, makes the uh, cross contamination. Okay, that offers the cross-contamination, is really important. What do you do to avoid cross-contamination in our in your schools? Related to knives, okay? To avoid cross-contamination by knives in your schools. Very basic measures, huh? For example, do you use uh, different color knives for raw ingredients and cooked ingredients? No, actually, we also have that, like in our Omnia school, have also that knife boxes, the separate mm -hmm. knife boxes. Okay. Usually we bring our knife, but still, because in work time, it's a little bit busy, so we also use that, uh, our school knife. Mm -hmm. But no, we we just um, maintain the chopping board, like which one for vegetable, which one for oh, meat. Okay. Yeah, okay. but you, not... Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. go on, go on, please. Yeah, Sorry. but not for the knife. But of course, when we... It's a basic knowledge. When we cut chicken or beef, we used to be that big one, which one used for that meat. And when we use like cut that vegetable, we are using that small one, but it's not uh, specifically all the time. But usually when we cut chicken or beef, the big meat, we use that bigger one and that uh, what you show in a video and that for vegetable and something else. But usually we bring one knife for us, but we ah. use <laughs> our school knife all the time. Okay. Okay, and uh, just a question, near your or whoever eh, wants to, to answer. Uh, yeah. Do you sharpen your own knives? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, we I, did. Yeah, we, I have a, and at my home, I have one machine that is small machine. I, I put it there, but in uh, usually in because before I was in working restaurant, so there is some metal thing, strong stick, there I sharpen. Yes, okay, you can sharpen here. Uh, when it comes to sharp uh, different knives, mm -hmm. uh, here they are like, uh, you can sharpen with with a stone. Mm, yeah. You can sharpen it uh, with in a dry way without water or using a bit of water, okay, to uh, not to, to damage too much the edge, okay, mm -hmm. uh, yes. with a bit of water. Other people bring their, their knives to different uh, sharpening stores. Uh, there are like places where you can sharp your your axes or your knives, whatever. But they use a machine. It's a stone with was very very fast. Yeah, and that that machine I have the small one, and there inside something like not metal, some something I <laughs> yeah. So I, if I put it there, so it's like. Uh, moisture and get very sharper so this small machine or yeah. something is like that there is a not machine it should be by my hand i have to sharpen by myself i have mm. to put it knife in that machine and do by myself mm -hmm. okay uh, you have to be careful if you uh, use this uh, mechanic stone okay because stone, you can yeah. almost eat 
the all the 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 yeah. edge of the knife okay yeah, so yeah. It, it has happened to me more than once you bring the your knife to to uh, this kind of place and uh, is half of the knife has disappeared and then say yes it's, it's sharpened but uh, there is no knife almost no knife okay so uh, it's it's important it's really important to maintain them uh, sharpened okay specifically uh, because specifically with, for for fish okay it's really important because fish requires a very very delicate cut and one sense cut not to be like with a serrated knife okay it's, it's really important